I am Dr. Heather Moore, owner of Total Performance Physical Therapy. Tonight we are going to go over what do you do when you pull a hamstring. So this seems to be a very common injury. Uh, a lot of athletes have it. I get asked a lot about a pulled hamstring uh, because it's something that comes up a lot in baseball season. Um, but we seem to see a lot of this in sports. And unfortunately it happens to a lot of people uh, that don't play sports and they they hear a pop or they pull a hamstring. Um, so what do you do? How do you fix it? What's, what's the issue? Uh, what, what happens? So first of all, just to clarify, the front of your leg is your quadricep. The back of your leg is your hamstring. So the hamstring's gonna go all the way from your butt down to the back of your knee. So and there's multiple muscles that make up your hamstring, so it's not just one big muscle, it is a muscle group. So you, when you talk about pulling a hamstring, there's one muscle generally that you pulled. Um, sometimes this does come associated with a pop, uh, and that can mean that you actually tore your hamstring, uh, unless that tear is extremely severe, uh, and there's really no surgery uh, to, that accompanies it. It's usually just physical therapy and uh, what exercises and things like that. The one thing to, that is most often overlooked when it comes to hamstring pulls and the reason why they seem to be so prevalent and outside of the calf, I think it's the most commonly pulled muscle, I mean, maybe more so than the calf muscle, is that when people pull their hamstring, they generally will only have their hamstring treated or they'll only concentrate on their hamstring because that's where the pain is, so it makes sense. Just make the pain in the hamstring stop, the whole thing will go away, and it'll never happen, it'll never happen again. We see a lot in professional athletes, you see people kind of straining the hamstring over and over and over again, or the same hamstring over and over and over again. This is because the original problem was never addressed. When you pull a hamstring, when you hear a pop, when you tear a hamstring, whatever the cause may be, and again, this may take place from your butt all the way down to your knee, so anywhere in between, uh, that can affect. When you pull a hamstring, uh, we find that a lot of people will do it repeatedly because they only will treat that hamstring area. It is so imperative. There is not a, a um, there's no real reason why you're going to pull your hamstring and have that be the only area affected. So when you have a hamstring injury, you've got to figure out why it was pulled. All right. Most of the time people are running, they're jumping, they're doing an activity when you pull your hamstring. But there's a weakness in there. And most of the time when I talk to people and I treat somebody with a pulled hamstring, it is a uh, story of either back pain um, that has been bothering them. Not enough to stop you, not that you've ever been treated for, but I say, you know, does your back ever bother you? Well, now that you say that, yeah, you know, I mean, I get stiff, I get sore after I work out or, or something along those lines. You could have hip issues, you could have foot issues. That's what makes the difficulty of treating that pulled hamstring so difficult because you have to find exactly what the cause was. And if you don't find the cause, you're not going to fix it and you're just going to keep re-injuring it and re-injuring it. And the worst part is, is that if you don't find the fix and you just treat the hamstring, what you're going to do is you're then going to cause your hip to fail and your back to fail. So what will happen is if people come in and they've gone somewhere and they've only had their hamstring treated, well now they've come in and their hamstring's a little sore, but now their butt's on fire or they've pulled their low back or they tore their Achilles because they never got the absolute best treatment for that hamstring. No one ever took the time to figure out exactly why that hamstring was pulled. Hamstrings just don't pull, okay? So you got to figure out exactly what happened with the hamstring pull. So once you figure that out, uh, there are a couple things that you can do in order to help it. So the first thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to stretch it. A lot of people think that, okay, I got to get through this. I've got to stretch it. It's already stretched. It's already hurt. All right. So don't wind up push, pushing it into a stretched position or standing here and trying to stretch it or have somebody else stretch it. That's only going to aggravate the situation. You really want to calm the hamstring down. And what you want to do is you actually want to strengthen around it. So a lot of people, because the hamstring uh, 
pool can be so painful, we'll stop their activity. And this is kind of the worst thing you can do. And I know if you've watched our other videos that we have, I do talk about this a lot, how stopping activity is generally not the way to go. Uh, but you want to have that gentle activity or that light activity or activities that are focusing on other muscle groups. So when you're talking about a hamstring fail, you're generally talking about a failure of the core. All right, there's some, some sort of weakness. May not be the only reason why you have that hamstring pull, but you have a weakness of the core. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to, first of all, work on the core. So you can do planks, side planks, reverse planks, those three exercises, okay? So just to show you quick, planks, and then going into side planks. All right, and then the one that everybody hates, this may be painful with the hamstring, okay? So if you come up here and it hurts, don't do that one right away. That's not a problem, okay? Slowly add that in or bend your knees, make some modifications. You also wanna work on strengthening your hips, which is part of your core. So doing a simple hip hike, which is going to strengthen your glute medius, take some of that pressure off of the hamstring, you want to ice your hamstring if you think you pulled it. What you also want to do is you want to take a tennis ball, a golf ball, a BC ball, and actually start to work on that area, rub that area. I know it's a little counterintuitive because it hurts and you don't really want to badger it. And you don't want to overwork it because yes, you can actually irritate it and make it a little worse. But you want to make sure that you're working out any knots that are in there. And you also wanna go onto the side to get your IT band, which is generally a culprit in some hamstring pulls. This being too tight causes some hamstring issues. So you have a, a ball, a tennis ball, a beastie ball. You wanna get on that muscle right in here and then you wanna work back here. Again, just a little bit, all right? And then work all the way up to where it attaches and into your glute there's going to be tightness, probably from here all the way down to your ankle. So make sure that you are working on all of those areas in order to loosen everything up and make sure that there are no muscle imbalances. The reason the hamstring got pulled is there's a muscle imbalance somewhere, probably multiple muscle imbalances, and you've got to find all of them and weed them out, otherwise it's gonna become chronic, which is unfortunately what we do see in a lot of professional athletes is this chronic. They keep re-tearing re it or re-pulling it or re-injuring it. So unless you wanna get on that vicious cycle, which I don't recommend, you really wanna find the cause and address all of the reasons that you're having that hamstring issue. If you are experiencing a hamstring pull or hamstring pain and you want to have a doctor of physical therapy, take a look at it for free. All you have to do is call us at 215-997-9898 and request a free consultation. Thanks and have a good night.